Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to this week's episode of Summersworth Angle. I know you're still Oliver, but I'm the big cheese now, okay? I'm in charge. This is my show. One might say I am the captain now. So, let's get right into the- I, I, what? No, what? No. Oh, you think this is just some rotating cast of characters? No, this is my show. Get, get out of here. Go. Yeah, get. Yeah, you should be sorry. You should be very sorry. Well, I'm Oliver Drew, your host, and this is the Summersworth Angle. This is the third episode. And on this week's episode, we have Mrs. Robin Comstock coming into the Swen studio, giving a lecture on the future of the workforce in the Summersworth area and as a whole in the world. And we also have an interview with Mr. Dana Hilliard, who is the principal of the middle school here in Summersworth, and also the mayor. And he is going to be talking about the same thing, shedding a bit more light on his perspective of the issue. Please stay tuned. We have a great show coming up for you. Hello everyone, my name is Santhi Russell and welcome. I'm currently a first year student in the Broadcasting Technology program here at the Summersworth Career Technical Center and I'm going to be introducing our speaker for today. Um, Robin Comstock is the Economic Development Manager for the City of Summersworth and she's going to be talking to us today about the business etiquette that will become necessary as we teenagers enter the workforce. So let's give a hand to Robin. Thank you so much for having me, thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's great to be here today and great to meet you. I am, as Santi said in the introduction, the Economic Development Manager for the City of Summersworth, the person who's in charge and responsible for bringing in the businesses that offer the jobs that you want for your future and for your family. So in the capacity of this job, I began talking to the school, to Summersworth Career Technical Center, about the labor force for the future. Because the surest way that we can grow and attract the employers that we want to have for the jobs that you want, you have to have a workforce. You have to have a competent workforce. You have to have a competitive workforce that can fill the gaps that employers are looking for and that employers want to hire. So I began meeting with and talking with the dean of your school and other staff people at the school about the Summersworth Career Technical Center and what the responsibilities for job placement are in this center. After several conversations, we pretty quickly concluded that it's long overdue, it's time now, to begin a new internship program. We asked ourselves, what would be of interest to you? What is it that you need? What is, and, more, and is important to the employers, truthfully, is what is it that you bring to them? Pretty quickly, we decided that we needed to meet with the employers of the city of Summersworth rather than assume what the employers wanted and needed. So we put our heads together and created a round table. And we invited about 12 or 14 of the largest employers in the city of Summersworth. Those employers immediately said when asked that they would come to a round table about this idea of the future workforce and how an internship can help bridge you as the future employees to their place of employment. We met here down in your grill and we were really pleased that everyone that we invited actually did come to the round table. They said to us, the old school internships of the past where you go in for a semester and you do an internship, that doesn't work. We need kids for a year. We need a year commitment because we end up spending the whole first semester teaching them how to use the job and then they leave. So we want interns for a whole year. So we talked about that and that was pretty easy to figure out. We talked about the times that work for school for kids. Like some kids go to school five, most kids go to school five days, some kids don't. Could an internship start at three and go to five or six? How do the hours work with you being in school with an employer? So we talked about that a little bit. But the issue, the burning issue of that meeting was that employers are very reluctant to take young interns into their place of employment in spite of needing a future workforce, in spite of not having a young, enough young people in the workforce, and a spot in spite of needing to build this workforce for the future, they are reluctant to bring interns, students, into their place of work. Because all of them said 
that students of today do not have social skills and they do not understand business etiquette and it is problematic in the workplace. And we are not going to bring interns in, high school students, early young college students, any students, until they've mastered just elementary social skills because they can't interface with me, they can't interface with their coworkers, they can't interface with the client, they don't understand cooperation, they don't understand teamwork, they don't understand communication through assembly, they don't understand personal image and impression, they don't understand soft social skills. So until and if you can give us students that understand, demonstrate, and practice those soft social skills, we can't work with them. Since that meeting, numerous secondary meetings have occurred in conversations. One of the things that we learned is that parents think that schools are teaching their children social skills, and schools think that parents are teaching their children social skills, and as a result, no one is teaching children social skills. Not that you're a child, not to suggest that, but this mastery of this business etiquette is not being taught and or practice. And keep in mind too, business etiquette is slightly different than personal etiquette. There's sort of the formal personal etiquette stuff that maybe your grandmother was smacking your hands about when you were five. And business etiquette is that, but it's a little different as well. So right now we're peeling back and we're looking at building this curriculum around professional etiquette. If you get on the web, you'll see a million websites that have terrific posts about it and what is demanded and how it's mapped out and what needs to happen for um, young students to be successful in the workplace. So I'm here today to get counsel and guidance from you to have a conversation about this subject matter and to see if we can't build the best internship possible that will be rewarding and fulfilling to you. I want to sincerely thank all of you for your time today. I think you are the best of the best and I'm very excited to be here, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you guys for attending, and that will conclude our presentation from Ms. Comstock. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Wasn't that awesome? Now we have an interview with Mr. Dana Hilliard, the principal of the middle school and the mayor of the Summersworth talking about the future of the youth of Summersworth and their job opportunities. Stay tuned. Mr. Hilliard, nice to have you in the oh, studio. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. And uh, I'm just going to jump into the interview because we don't have a lot of time here. But um, I we had a conference thing with Robin Comstock. She came to the studio. She talked to uh, the students in this school a bit about the Summersworth area, businesses, and yep. hiring. And she, in some businesses, highlighted a problem I with normal, everyday students and people that we are having a trouble, apparently, the youth of Summersworth, having a trouble with basic social contact. And I just wanted to follow up with you about this, seeing as you are the principal of the middle school and you are uh, the mayor of Summersworth. Have you seen that? Do you see a change in the workforce as the youth of this area enter it? Well, I have a lot of respect for Robin. Um, Robin is a new additive to city government. Um, we spent a lot of time looking for someone who would complement the needs of this community um, and continue to move this community forward, both in attracting businesses and keeping our economy very vital and really molding into what our Vision 2020 plan is with our economy. So um, Robin, Robin certainly is an expert within her field and I'm glad that she's joined the, the Summersworth City Hall team. Um, but you, you know, to, to paint the youth with a wide brush, I always caution away from. I always caution away from both as a professional within education, as a principal, and certainly as the, you know, the elected uh, leader of this community within the position of mayor. Um, it's a very, very broad kind of category. Saying that, that the youth have specific problems um, adjusting socially. Um, and, and really, you can, you can gear at any generation. Um, you know, I'm part of Generation X. Um, 
and Generation X was, was labeled as being people that were incredibly arrogant, uh, apathetic, um, lazy in, in some cases. Some of this might be signing, uh, sounding very familiar to your generation or, or some of the things that have been pinged with your generation. Uh, but lo and behold, the Xers who are labeled as lazy, arrogant, and apathetic have been the ones that have pushed forward now that we're into positions of power and are into positions within our career. We're the ones who were the early ones um, really calling the whistle on global warming. Uh, we have moved into the, ha the halls of power, whether it be City Hall, the State House, or the United States Congress. Uh, we have certainly become power brokers within the economy. Um, so, you know, I, I always caution labeling things on the youth. I mean, you, you can go back to BC and Plato was, and Plato and Socrates were saying the same thing about the youth during their time period. Um, I, I certainly think there is some, there is certainly some differences as there are differences between the Xers and the baby boomers. There's going to be vast differences. The world is a lot different. Um, this generation is incl incredibly more plugged in than the Xers were, the generation that I belong to. Um, you have to keep in mind that the internet, and I know you'll be shocked by this, didn't, didn't even come into fruition until my junior year in college. So yes, those were the days where you physically had to go to the library to study um, because it just certainly wasn't available. And you know, I, I think in, in some cases it is the adults that have the problem adjusting. Um, it's the adults that have the problem with changing the economy. It's the adults that have the problem with the new dynamics of the workforce. Um, even within education, it, it's the adults that have the problem uh, to adjusting to the new demands of the new generation coming forward and really their demands on how they learn. Um, I've certainly had to catch up. I've had to catch up with technology. Um, I'm two weeks in to my, you know, my fancy little iWatch here, <laughs> probably the best thing that I've ever received as a gift. Um, but certainly, uh, I, I'm still adjusting to some of the needs, uh, not only of what the community, the community needs as far as the youth needs are, but, but certainly the needs of the economy and how that economy is changing. Um, you know, e each generation is going to have a gap. They're going to have a gap because we were raised different. The world was a lot different. Um, the world that you are living in and this generation in is living in is certainly a lot different than a generation that I grew up. You have to remember that we, you know, we, when we grew up, um, most of, especially the Xers, most of us were actually thinking that the Soviet Union was going to invade Summersworth and all make us part of the Lenin Brigade. You know, that we grew up when the Berlin Wall was still up. There were two, there were two Germanys. Um, so, so certainly our eyes are fixated in some needs. Um, some of the criticisms <coughs> of this current generation is, is really some things that I see that they will grow out of, is that you, the, the workforce is saying that the, particularly this generation has a, has a hard time with showing up on time, has a hard time with work ethic, has a hard time with, with sticking to certain tasks, being able to carry forward with those tasks. Uh, these are all skills that, that you learn that you learn as you, as you go through life. Uh, but we also know that the economy is going to be a, a lot different um, than the economy of the Xers or even of the baby boomers. As you know, the baby boomers were used to joining a corporation, joining a company, um, taking on a skill or a job, and that's what you would stick with for your life, is that if you were a carpenter, you would be a carpenter for life. If you worked for General Electric, you would work for General Electric for 30 years and end up retiring. We know that's not going to be the case with your generation, I, is that you, your, guy, your generation and the Y generation right now are in, and, the, and the millennials are incredibly mobile, is that they are going to have uh, anywhere between a half dozen and a dozen different jobs and or careers before they end up retiring. Um, the Xers, uh, I mean, we're, we're under that. We're under that, well, well under that. We're, we're not with one career, but maybe maybe three different changes within our career path. So um, I certainly think taking a wide brush and painting any generation and nailing them down, uh, especially the youth with certain attributes that all of you have and are going to continue to have as you age and grow into adulthood is very unfair and is certainly not the case. And on that, because it was an excellent answer to the question, um, we try. Thank yes. You. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, with on that, we talked about the youth and how much do you think technology plays into the changing of the workforce? And do you think businesses, especially in the Summersworth era, are going to be able to kind of adapt to that, or do you think that they might lose their way a bit? Oh, I incredibly. I mean, technology uh, is going to be the bedrock of moving forward. We're we're a very mobile 
economy now, and we're and we're no longer just an insulated economy. You know, Summersworth is no longer just competing against Dover and Rochester. Is that we we are competing with cities in Germany, we are competing with cities in China, we are con competing with cities in um, in India. I is that we know we are a global economy, but there are certain things even within that global economy that then you need to find of where where is your niche in the world? What what is what is marketable? about you and what is different that will attract businesses and will certainly attract those consumers or people to move to your um, community. So Summersworth has seen an incredible boom within the last six years. Our economy ha has really, the whole community has turned itself around. Um, we have rediscovered who we were. Uh, for you know, well over two decades, we've kind of been wandering through the forest lost without a flashlight. Uh, finally, we have that flashlight and we're on the path and we know the direction that we're heading in. Um, we, we used to down ourselves a lot by saying we're never going to be a Portsmouth, you know, we're never going to be a Dover, we're never going to be a Rochester. You're right. We don't have to be a Portsmouth. We don't have to be a Dover. We don't have to be a Rochester. Um, we're Summersworth and we have something different that those other communities do not. We're 10 square miles. We're the smallest community in New Hampshire. We're the smallest city in New Hampshire. And because of that, we have real neighborhoods that still exist, is that we have that old Yankee connection that doesn't exist within other communities, and that is becoming incredibly marketable, is that people actually knowing who their neighbors are, is that neighbor, this is still the city where if your neighbor is out with a, a shovel and trying to remove a foot of snow, and the neighbor next door has a snowblower, that they will come over and snowblow your driveway. Um, these things don't happen in other communities. That is becoming incredibly attractive um, to a lot of people that are, are, have maybe invested in homes in other communities and has realized that they are incredibly sterile. Um, our economy in our downtown area, we have invested an incredible amount in. And that first corridor as you move into Berwick is, is occupied with businesses, the small sole proprietorships, uh, we are working on the next corridor with some great plans within the future. Um, we, we had adopted our plan over 10 years ago, which is called Vision 2020, which is making Summersworth one of the most desirable communities to live in on the seacoast by the year 2020. There are very few homes for sale in this community right now, and if there are, the turnover rate of buying those homes is very fast, is that we, we have had a lot of people moving in, and a lot of what attracts people to Summersworth is the people-to-people -people connection. Um, is the fact that we are incredibly diverse for 10, square mi for 10 square miles and that we celebrate that diversity, that we honor each other's differences and find those connections that all of us have as human beings. Well, that is awesome. Uh, thank you for coming in and talking to me about this, um, especially about the youth stuff and uh, the changing workforce because it's something that I'm very interested in and I definitely am atten paying attention to. Um, thank you for joining us in the Summersworth Angle Studio. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching this episode. It has been so much fun. I am your host, Oliver Drew, and stay tuned.